Thank you. I call the member for Coogee. Good job. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to rise today in support of the Transport Administration Amendment Bill 2011. This bill is yet another election commitment and, in fact, is one of our oldest election commitments. It was first announced in 2008. This bill will bring about uh, Transport for New South Wales will bring about major uh, positive changes for the people of New South Wales. We're combining a group of disparate and disconnected transport agencies into one. There are, are real problems, very real problems, that need to be fixed in New South Wales, uh, and public transport is at the top of the list as far as I'm concerned after 16 years of Labor Party neglect. My electorate of Coogee has the state's uh, fourth highest usage of public transport in New South Wales. In fact, one in three of my constituents use, uses public transport to travel to work. So it'll come as no surprise that public transport, and specifically our buses, uh, is one of the biggest issues on the minds of my constituents. During my campaign and, during, and in my time as uh, member so far, public transport has been the most consistently talked about issue in the seat of Coogee, most likely because it has the potential to affect our lives more frequently than almost any other government issue. Mr Speaker, Coogee is one of the smallest electorates in the state in an area spanning just 14.4 square kilometres. My electorate has 41 different bus services, one train station, and in a few years' time, I'm very, very confident it will have a light rail line to the University of New South Wales. This is so long overdue uh, and is, it will be welcomed so much. I mean, the Anzac Parade bus route is one of the, if not the, busiest in the state of New South Wales. So in Coogee, we're actually well endowed with public transport services, but it seems as though the previous government aimed for quantity over quality. People in Coogee are familiar with the uh, Anzac Parade conga line of buses, crawling buses, uh, or the competition for space on any of the consistently packed buses in peak hour, or the old Mercedes-Benz buses which take on the secondary function as a sauna in the warmer months, or the car parks that we used to call roads, or the punctuality of our buses which is about as consistent and predictable as the former government's leadership. Speaking of the former government, this is the legacy that they've left us. The, the consistent mistakes of the last 16 years must not and will not be repeated. In, indeed, it is shameful. Transport agencies under Labor competed for resources, taking a myopic vision devoted to their own welfare, not to that of the commuter. They all sought, they all sought to undermine each other's pursuit with, uh, of their particular agenda. They didn't work as a team and there was no focus on providing the great service that our constituents expect. Transport authorities are fundamental to the provision of quality service and their cohesion is critical for real changes to be made. This is why Transport for New South Wales is an integrated authority split into six divisions, customer experience, planning and programs, policy and regulation, transport services, transport pro projects and freight and regional development. An integrated agency ensures that customers' needs are at the heart of every decision and that there, there are shared needs, shared ideas and shared solutions which will allow people access to better quality public transport in New South Wales. <coughs> For too long, much needed reform of public transport has stood idle. Transport for New South Wales will inject a new vigour and innovation to to the, into a new future for public transport in New South Wales. Now just imagine bus, ferry, train and light rail timetables working in harmony, allowing people to seamlessly travel on as many modes of transport as they need to. Imagine the services arriving on time and staying on time throughout the day. Imagine it being more efficient and pleasurable to take public transport than to drive a car. Imagine, and, and, and this one should be easy, an integrated ticketing system allowing us to use the same ticket across different modes of transport. It is possible, it's long overdue, and Transport New South Wales is the first step in this direction. 
Sydney has become more crowded, then make no mistake, but getting around does not have to be the chore that Labor allowed it to become. A constituent of mine in an email recently told me how he had seen more efficient public transport systems in many less developed countries. And he makes a good point. You know, there's simply no excuse for the parlous state that our transport net network is in. Transport for New South Wales will promote increased productivity by coordinating commuter movements and increasing the efficiency of freight, maritime and port authorities to ensure that they work together to provide better outcomes for the New South Wales economy. Transport New South Wales will equip us with a transport division solely focused on freight for the first time. The benefits from increasing the efficiency of freight and maritime movements is quite obvious and particularly important to a sagging and lagging economy. Transport is in integral to the economic development and prosperity of this state and for the first time we'll have an agency that focuses on this fundamental need. Mr Speaker, this bill is about simplicity and efficiency. Currently across uh, the transport network, office staff are employed on more than 10 different awards. This bill establishes the Transport <coughs> Service of New South Wales, uh, a distinct identity which will consolidate these awards into one simple award to work with, consistent with the New South Wales public sector. All staff who transfer, transfer from old agencies to new agencies will not incur any financial detriment. The consolidation of these awards means that people doing si similar or the same work won't be paid or treated differently, a much fairer and more equitable system for all workers. It means that we can spend less time waiting through the red tape and more time on resources, on providing better frontline services <coughs> to the people of New South Wales. Mr Speaker, the task of providing quality transport that people actually want to use is a tough one, but it's not a challenge this government or I will shy away from. Public transport should be an efficient and enjoyable experience, not one plagued with uncertainty, discomfort and delays. Trip times should be measured in minutes, not hours. Provision of, new major, provision of major new services should be measured in years, not decades. Investment should be measured in the billions, not millions. Without the long-term vision and cohesive planning that will be for provided by an integrated agency such as Transport for New South Wales, nothing would change. Band-aid solutions would continue to be applied to serious problems, half-baked plans hastily assembled and never costed, uh, would never come to fruition and all would have left a broken promises and long forgotten media releases. The establishment of Transport for New South for New South Wales is the crit critical, crucial first step in this direction and the first of many great reforms that this government will deliver. It's a major step in making New South Wales number one again. Ministers Berejiklian and Gay are to be commended for their hard work and for their vision and I commend the bill to the House. The question is that this bill be now agreed in principle. I